guys, welcome to the show. Today, I have a very special guest, Victoria Mandalore. She's a very dear friend, and she has an amazing story of how she came to faith in, to, in Christ. Uh, she actually was led to Christ by Justin Bieber on a private jet. She is, we met like five years ago at my church. She lives in Europe now. And so it's very late for her there. <laughs> and she just put her baby down. She just had a baby and she just put her baby down to sleep. So uh, we'll just hope the baby stays asleep. Welcome, Victoria. Hi, Becca. Thank you for having me. Good to have you on. So I want to start. I want to get to your story of how you came to faith in Christ. But let's start from the beginning. Where were you born? What, how were you raised? Were you raised in any kind of faith in Christianity? Like, tell us, tell us that story. Um, I was born in Bogota, Colombia, and I was raised Catholic. I was baptized. I did my first communion. I did not do the confirmation, which is what comes after the first communion. Uh, and, you know, I was raised going to church every Sunday. Uh, I went to Catholic school. I went to a French Colombian Catholic school. And um, so I had God. I was I was taught, you know, about God. Right. And I remember always going to church and seeing the big, you know, growing in South America. I also lived in Peru. We'll get there. But uh, they always have this elaborate churches with the big statues of Jesus, you know, nailed to the cross and the paintings and the icons and all of this. So I just remember always going to church and seeing that whole display. And yeah. So tell us how, so you came to tell us about immigrating to the United States. How did that happen? And how old were you? The first time that we immigrated to the United States, I was eight months old and my mom crossed the Mexican border with me. Uh, she smuggled me into the country. She was in the trunk of a car and there was a friend that was supposed to go and pick us up at the border. And that friend happened to have a birth certificate of an American baby, American citizen baby. And they were going to use that birth certificate to cross, cross me over. And my mom was going to be hiding in the trunk of the car. And that's basically how how I was able to come in for the first time. And so that worked, right? Your mom, we, we, did your mom actually hide in the trunk of the car? She did. She was in there for about four hours. Then fast forward, I moved to, we're now we're in the States. I'm 14 and a half, almost 15 years old. And this uncle that uh, saved my aunt in Mexico uh, began grooming me. He actually began grooming me when he came to visit us in Colombia and I was 12. That was the first time I met him in person. And he made a few things that now thinking back, I can see clearly he, he began the grooming process. And so he groomed me for, since I arrived to the United States until I was 17 and uh, he raped me. And um, it was, it was, yeah, it went on for many years, oh, wow. and he okay. used mm, he, and he used God to uh, to do what he was doing because he knew that I believed in God, and uh, so he would say to me that God is love, and what he felt for me was pure love, the purest of love. And what were Therefore, you thinking? What were you thinking during this whole period with him? I mean, did you know? Were you frightened? Were you, did you know it was like wrong? Like, or were you just kind of, what did you, what were you feeling during that time? Absolutely. The, the first time that he, uh, that he made a move, it was very traumatizing because I remember he had already been doing things that uh, I knew were wrong. And I was, I was a virgin. I was a very innocent girl. I was not a 15 year old girl that was developed or anything like that. I, came from Colombia with my Barbies. Like I still play Barbies mm -hmm. and I know it's silly, but I mean, yeah, I was a very innocent 15 year old girl and I was very ashamed of my body. I was very skinny and I was very, I was bullied in Colombia. And then when I came to high school in Pasadena, I was also bullied a lot. So I, I there was no type of, um, self-esteem in me to to 
seduce a, an adult man. Yeah. Which, which is what I was accused of doing. I was accused by the family of seducing him. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, he would, I would go to school and I would take the bus early in the morning and he would be waiting at the bus stop in his car and he would follow the bus. And I remember shaking always and, and you know, wanting to hide in the bus, but he knew I was in the bus and he knew where I was getting off. So it was, it was quite, it was quite awful because I knew how wrong it was, but then he was also very clever at convincing me that it was love, that love is good, that God is love and that he loves me more than his own daughters. And then he would give me gifts and then, and did you ever you tell know, your he mother? would pay for, I told my mother the first time that he kissed me on the lips, I told my mother, I said, my, my uncle kissed me on the lips. And she said, oh, no, he didn't. He probably tried to kiss you on the cheek and you just didn't, you just didn't, you know, he missed it. And, and then I think everybody knew in the family what was going on. But then he got to me, you know, then I started protecting him because he said, you know, if people find out what's going on, uh, I can go to jail and I will go to jail for a very long time. So wow. I started going along with it, but deep down, I, I always felt dirty. I always felt it was awful. It was an awful time in my life, uh, thinking back. And I, I've actually forgotten a lot of things, but I think I've blocked them out of my memory. Um, and but so he ended what, up going. He ended up what? Going to jail. I, I, I pressed charges against him. Wow. So. Okay, so let's move on. Sorry to jump to fast forward, but let's move on to how, and then you, what happened in terms of you getting, because I, if I remember correctly, you got into kind of the new age stuff. Like, well, how did that happen? And then how did you get out of that? Okay, so this aunt that I told you about yeah. from Colombia is now living in Pasadena. Okay. She, she's moved to Pasadena. I'm now a married woman with my current husband and she contacted me and she said, Victoria, I have this great retreat that I want you to come with and you're going to love it. It's going to be wonderful, blah, 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 blah. And it's all paid for. You don't have to pay for anything. I said, sure. And we end up going to Cabo San Lucas to do this retreat with Joe Dispenza. And it was a seven day retreat. And it was just hardcore meditating from four in the morning until midnight. You only took breaks to eat. So I did the meditating. I did the retreat and it was mind blowing. I was awakening my third eye and I had the snake coiling up my spine and all that stuff. But funny enough, on the very last day of that retreat, when he was explaining the snake and how the energy works and how this is all the sexual energy that you're activating in your body. And um, you're make, basically making it go through your spinal cord and then meeting the fluids in your brain. And that's how you activate your pineal gland. And then your third eye is boom, right? Right. She, uh, the way that Joe Dispenza was explaining it to me, it, to everybody, it just hit me. Something felt weird in my stomach. And I was like, mm. it's true. It works because I've been doing this meditating and it works. I don't feel the pain that I have in my neck. I, I went on like crazy travels, like woof, like you're traveling into space. Like if you if you do drugs, I mean, I've never done drugs. I've smoked marijuana, but I can only compare it to someone doing drugs. And that's the type of meditating that I was doing. And I was getting coming out of my body. I was having really, really uh, heavy stuff. And then I kept going. I kept going. When I came back to, I came back home. We were living in Santa Monica. And I started going to two different yogi studios, one in Venice and one in uh, Santa Monica. So yeah, I was, I was very much into that stuff. And now I'm a flight attendant. I'm, I'm a, I become a corporate flight attendant and I'm flying in private jets. And... I went to India and when I was in India, I remember paying to have a personal like 
guru come to my room and meditate with me and help me do like all this stuff. And I was doing, I got really, really into this stuff. But at the same time, I was having this horrible uh, sleep paralysis where I was falling asleep and I was either coming out of my body or I was seeing uh, entities come into the room trying to take me and I couldn't move. I couldn't talk. I would try to scream and there was no voice coming out of me. All my limbs were just completely frozen and I just couldn't do anything. And I was having a lot of this happen to me. It happened to me in India. It happened to me in Thailand. I remember walking into this beautiful room that they that I got, and there was a Buddha statue right outside of the room. And I walked into the room, and I felt this just eerie feeling inside me. And I knew I was going to have a sleep paralysis. And sure enough, I had one of the most horrible sleep paralysis. Uh, but at the time, I was already curious about Jesus, and I had a Bible. And when this entity that kind of looked like an alien, very much like an alien, which people say that aliens are demons, and I believe that, uh, was coming to get me. And I just closed my eyes since I couldn't move anything. I could only open and close my eyes. I closed my eyes and I just said, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, please get rid of this entity. Take it away from me, please. And Beckett, like this thing had three fingers, three long fingers. It was skinny. And this thing just went. Wow. And it just disappeared. Amazing. And I wasn't even a full believer then, but it worked. That was the and, beginning. Yeah. And so yeah. tell, and and then you, I, I guess the next thing that, the next major thing that happened is you were on a flight with Justin Bieber and he would well, tell us about that. Like, is that, is that kind of the next step in, in your coming to faith in Christ? Well, uh, I had had encounters with other Christian before Justin. And uh, one of them was a friend of mine from college who was uh, gay. And he would, I remember he would, you know, he was very flamboyantly gay. And one day he called me out of nowhere and he said, Victoria, I just want to share with you the greatest news. Uh, I've been saved and life is wonderful. You know, I'm, I'm not gay. And arrogant Victoria said to him, what? You're not gay? What do you mean you're not gay? You will forever be gay. Mm -hmm. And if there is a God, if your God uh, is so loving, he's going to love you even if you're gay. Okay? So please like forget about it like just just be yourself just be gay and be happy right i remember telling him that and it was horrible i mean now thinking back of course it was horrible and i invited him to go to a concert with me uh her name is gloria trevi it's a very it's a mexican singer and she is like um she's like an icon in the gay community and he decided to go to the concert with me but when they had this show that it was like two, it was um, a white man and a black man dressed in the white, in the devil and in the, in the angel. And then they were making out on stage. I remember he turned his back and he wouldn't watch it. And I was just dancing along and watching the show. And I looked at him and I'm like, come on, just enjoy yourself. This is great. And he wouldn't. And I'm mocking him. Fast forward. And now I'm on the flight with Justin. Um, uh, I was assigned to do his South American tour and he gets on board and the first thing that he says to me is, well, after we talked for a couple of minutes, he looked at me and he said, do you believe in Jesus Christ? And, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and I just looked at him and I said, excuse me? He goes, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe that he's the son of God? That was crucified and died for your sins and you're you're forgiven and i was sort of like uh well you know i'm very spiritual i do a lot of like meditating and stuff like you know maybe yeah maybe he existed very arrogant and he said well have you ever listened to uh, christian music 
And I was like, no, not really. He goes, well, I have a, a few songs that I want to sh share with you that you need to listen to them because when I listen to them, I can feel the Holy Spirit in me. And I'm just thinking, what is he talking about? The Holy Spirit? <laughs> what is he? Is he, is he high? Like he's not allowed to smoke on the plane. I haven't smelled any. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, he gives me the names of the songs. And I remember taking a picture of his phone. And then we're flying from New York to, I think it was Sao Paulo, to Brazil. We get to Brazil. I go straight to my hotel room. I'm exhausted. And the first thing I do, which is what I used to do every time I got to my hotel room, was open my iPad and just watch YouTube. I would never turn on the TV. So I open my iPad and I go to my YouTube and what comes up? A video from this woman who used to be a model in New York and she used to be a yoga instructor. And it says, from yoga to Christianity. And I'm like, what? I haven't been watching any videos about Christianity. I haven't been watching videos about yoga because I didn't really need to watch videos about yoga. I was doing it myself. And then I'm like, why is this coming up? And I start watching it. And this woman is talking about the sleep paralysis, all these things that are happening to me. She describes how the snake is all like, it's, all, it's literally like all Satan stuff, just demonic, evil stuff. And it hits me and I'm like, okay, this is scary. And then another video, you know, after you watch one video, then similar videos come up. So then another person that from the new age to Christianity, and then I keep watching videos and I keep watching videos. And then I'm like, this is kind of creepy, but I'm still not getting it. I, something's clicked on me, but I'm like, mm, okay, I'm paying attention now. I see Justin again the next day and he goes, so did you listen to the music? Did you listen to the songs? And I was like, Actually, no, my internet was down. I couldn't download the songs. <laughs> it was no worry because I have more. I have more songs to share with you. And I was like, oh, so he means this. Like he he actually wants me to like download these songs. So it gives me a couple of other songs to download. And um, I remember I didn't listen to them until we got to uh, the Dominican Republic and I was sitting on the beach and I got my phone and I put the headphones on and I started listening to it. And, and I was like, well, this is beautiful. This is nice. Fast forward, I come back to the States and I'm planning a surprise birthday party for my husband. When I am walking down the street with my dog, a big dog attacks him. I fall backwards and I tear my Achilles tendon. And now I can't walk, I can't go to work, I can't plan the party except via phone with whoever is helping me. And now I'm stuck in bed with my Bible because I had already bought the Bible by then. Yeah. And I start reading it. And Beckett, it was like the words of that Bible and it was the King James Version, <laughs> which for me was like a fourth language. <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking at it. And the, it's like the letters are popping and I'm understanding what I'm reading. And I'm not only understanding it, but it's hitting me. It's hitting me in a weird way. And I start trembling. And I said, I'm going to call my friend, Christer. And I called him and I said, Christer, I remember you told me that you were a Christian. Well, I this don't was, know this what was the I gay am. guy who became a Christian, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I am, but I'm curious. I'm reading the Bible and I'm feeling something. And he said, Victoria, what are you doing? This was a Friday, uh, Saturday night. I said, Victoria, what are you doing tomorrow, tomorrow morning? And I said, well, I can't really do anything because I have a boot and a broken Achilles, a torn Achilles. Um, so, yeah, he goes, well, you're going to church with me. So he's, he lives in Santa Barbara. He says, please meet me at this address. And he gives me the address of Reality LA. So I wake up early in the morning. I get in the car. I get to Reality. And he's not there. He's running late. And I just remember looking at everybody and thinking, people believe in God. There are what year, what year was this? What year was this? This was 2000. 
2017. Okay, so I was there. I was, was it the nine o'clock? What service was it? The early one. Okay, I wasn't at the nine o'clock. I, I, I went to the noon, or so I probably wasn't at that <laughs> service. But so, what happened during the service? What happened? I decided to go straight up to the front row, and I just got dead center in the front, and I'm looking, and they're singing, and they're singing, and I'm listening, and then the pastor comes out and he starts talking. I cannot remember what verse he was reading what nothing because it all just kind of became like a wah, wah, wah in my head and I just fell to my knees and I began sobbing in the middle of the sermon and every in the middle I, I, I yeah in the middle of the sermon I'm just sobbing and then it's like like my life is flashing in front of me and I'm I'm feeling this horrible guilt, but then all of a sudden, as I cry, it's like this guilt is being like taken, it's taken away from me. And then I feel love. It's this supernatural love. And then this overwhelming peace and I'm sobbing and I can't get up back on my feet. I can't, and something is happening. And like all kinds of things are happening to me and I'm just, I can't get up my knees just crumble and I felt the Holy Spirit wow and I was the same and I was never the same and pro-choice Victoria became pro-life right away <laughs> that's what happened um, to me I immediately became pro-life because I instantly knew that we were made in the image of God and that human life is sacred so I, yeah, that's exactly what happened to me. I was like, boom, it just like, I was pro-life. In an instant. And, but it, it was like, it's so hard to describe, but it's a supernatural experience. And yeah, I was you were so born aware. again. You were born again. You were regenerated and born again in that moment. Completely. Completely. And so Completely. What, what, what happened when you told your husband about this news <laughs> my husband who had seen me having sleep paralysis and who almost called 911 because he's trying to wake me up because i'm scream I'm, I'm like shaking in the bed right but i can't scream and then finally i'm able to scream as i have this black entity hovering over my body trying to take me with him and i'm outside of my body watching the whole thing and my my husband's like thinking that someone broke into the apartment in santa monica and then he comes back and sees nobody in the room, but it's just me having a nightmare. Tries to wake me up. He can't. He freaks out. He's like, I was about to call 911. Finally, I come back to my senses. So then now I come a couple months after that. And I'm like, I'm, I'm a Christian. I've been born again. And he goes, oh, no, no, not again. <laughs> He's like, no. He's like, what can you just be? You don't have to search for things so much. Just just be Victoria, just accept yourself. Just love, you know, for him, he was like, this woman yeah. is crazy. This woman is crazy. Okay. So final question. Uh, we have to, we're going to wrap up, but so were you ever able to tell Justin Bieber that what the effect he had on, you know, what effect that had on you and that you became a Christian? Is he aware of that? So now? yeah. So I think a year a year after I became a Christian, maybe less than a year after I became, a, it was less than a year. I, they sent me to South Africa to pick him up because uh, it was the other half of his tour or something like that. But he was in South Africa. And I went to pick him up. Uh, I flew him from South Africa to Brazil. And in that leg, when he woke up, I was able to tell him, I was like, Justin, I'm a Christian. He goes, let's pray. And so we prayed together. <laughs> and, and yeah. He was happy about that. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. That must have been so encouraging for him to hear that too. You know, like to see the kind of like the to see someone come to salvation after you've, you know, planted seeds and stuff. That's amazing. I think so. And I think so. I think that he's persevering of like, well, did you listen to the songs? And I was like, mm, he's been serious about this. <laughs> so I have to listen to these songs. Yeah, he 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 planted the seed and 
you know, there, there might be people out there that say, oh, because Justin told them and she believes in Jesus. And it's like, no, I mean, there were other people that were planting seeds in my head, but it was sort of like the timing of everything. Everything just yeah. so happened that it worked out. You know what I mean? So, yeah, he, he was another person that was put in my life to sort of put the last seed and water it and go, okay, yes. he's real. Praise he, God. I had never heard, praise God, I had never heard um, anyone just put it so simple. He's the son of God that died for you. Just as simple as that. He died for you. And he did. Amazing. You know? Amazing. I love yeah. it. Well, we have to leave it there because we're out of time. But thank you so much for sharing all of that, Victoria. And I'm so, I mean, I'm thrilled. I mean, I think we met pretty pretty soon after you got saved because it was around 2017 2018 or something like that so you were freshly was, saved when i met you yeah and probably freshly baptized as well which that was another yes. amazing experience we're gonna leave it there thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing that i appreciate it thank you for having me back it's lovely to see you you look wonderful so good to see you and guys, we will see you next week on the show. Thank you.